Hello, welcome to the last lecture on iterative compression. Uh, in this lecture we will do an algorithm for odd cycle transversal which I will define shortly. It is basically deletion uh, to get a bipartite graph and uh, actually uh, this, this is the paper which for the first time used the algorithm for which used the technique of iterative compression. And this paper was called finding odd cycle transversal uh, by Bruce Reed, Kelly Smith, Adrian Vetter and appeared in a journal operation research letters in 2004, uh, though the preprint was available already starting from 2003. And uh, yeah, so it is a short three page paper, but it revolutionized or it gave a new technique to the field of parameterized complexity. And so this algorithm ran in time 3 power k n to the power big O of 1. Uh, yeah. And uh, this is an algorithm which we were going to uh, talk today. Okay. And it is important to point out that uh, the pr whether an odd cycle transversal is fixed parameter tractable or not was an uh, open problem for some time uh, before this problem, this paper resolved this in affirmative as well as for the first time uh, as far as we are aware use the, the iterative compression the way it is used. Uh, now or the way we have been seeing in last three lectures. Okay, so without any delay, let's just get started. Uh, yeah, let's just get started. So the problem what we are going to deal with is is the following. Okay, so the problem today we will be dealing with in the whole lecture is one problem called odd cycle transversal. Okay, and also called as OCT in short. So, input is going to be g comma k, parameter is going to be k and the question is does g has a set s subset of v g mod s less than equal to k second g minus s is a bipartite graph. Okay. So, what is a bipartite graph? It is well known fact that this is a well known theorem in the literature that G or in a graph theory G is a bipartite graph if and only if G does not have any odd length cycle. Okay? Now, so if you recall feedback vertex set is a problem is a problem. So, feedback vertex set is a problem of what you call hitting all cycles right? because then only you can get a forest and OCT is about hitting all odd cycles right so actually there are also problem called ect which is hitting all even cycles okay but uh, yeah uh, yeah so oct is about hitting all odd cycles fvs is about hitting all cycles ect is about hitting all even cycles okay and ECT is actually more like a feedback vertex set, but so we will, if uh, at least we will not go into in this in this course. ECT is very similar in spirit to feedback vertex set. Okay, so this is why the name came odd cycle transversal. Transversal means something which hits something. So you are looking for a set which hits all odd cycle transversal and hence the name odd cycle transversal or OCT in short. Okay. So, now OCT is also a vertex deletion problem. We can employ iterative compression on this on this similar to 
FVS, feedback vertex set in tournament, vertex cover, so on and so forth. Okay? And the, so the problem which we will be interested in is straight away we will go to solving uh, disjoint compression or cycle transversal D C O C T. Okay. Okay. So, what is going to be input? Input is going to be uh, input is going to be a graph G, an integer k. Okay, and a S. Let's S subset of vertex set of G. G minus S is bipartite. Okay, and mod S is less than equal to k plus one parameter is k and the question we are asking does there exist an odd cycle transversal O such that first size of O is at post k, second uh, g minus O is bipartite and third uh, O intersection S is empty. So, this is why it is disjoint. So, I have been given a solution of size at most k plus 1 okay? and what I would like to do is to find a solution which is disjoint from S. Okay? So, if I look at picture wise, so what are we given? We are given, uh, we are given here is S and here is G minus S which is bipartite. Okay? And we need to find a solution from G minus S. So, as always our sanity check. Okay? What do you have to do? First let us do a sanity check. Each graph induced on S bipartite. If not, then you need to at least any solution O that we are uh, we are interested in must pick at least one must has to pick at least one vertex from S because there is a odd cycle that is completely contained inside the set S. Okay? So, no implies you also say return no. So, sanity check done. Okay. So, now what we know is that G of S is bipartite. Okay. Now, I know that I know that S is not going to be part of the solution, not going to be part of the solution. Okay. So, what is going to happen is that this is my O and look at G minus O, S is completely contained inside G minus O. If S is completely contained inside G minus O, then since G minus O is bipartite, there exists a part, there exists a bipartition V1, V2 of G minus O, right? And S is say bipartition, say this is uh, or rather coloring is bipartite, there exists two coloring of G minus O into black and white. Let us say this is, so V 1 is black, V 2 is white and S is some portion here, some portion here, right. S is divided into some portion of S becomes black and some portion becomes white. Okay. So, what are we going to do? We are going to guess, guess a partition of S into B and W. Okay. This is we are going to guess. Right? So, we are going to guess a partition of S into black and white. Okay? 
black and white and would like to find a two coloring of G. Okay, what is my goal? And my goal is to find a two coloring of G after deleting some k vertices that respects the coloring of B and W. Okay. So, now my world looks like Okay. Okay. So now let's look at how the world looks like. So your S is here, B, some portion W. Okay. And here is my bipartite graph G minus S. Now that you have decided which vertices in S is going to be black, right? Okay. Uh, okay. Look at this, right? Uh, look at this black and white. Now, what do you know about this? Look at the neighbors of B. If we would like to propagate, right? Propagate. Then, look at the neighbors of B. Okay. Look at the neighbors of B, black. Neighbors of bla black, right? Here are neighbors of these guys, what should they get a color? They should get a color white. What should the neighborhood of W get a color? Neighborhood of W, okay, so let's say this is not, does not look like a, let us say somehow white, they should get white and look at the neighbor of white in G minus S, they should be getting a color black, right? They should be getting color black, maybe I should use, right? This is how. So, actually, we have reduced the following problem. Okay. So, what are what is the problem we have reduced? So, we have reduced to the following problem on bipartite graph. So, what we can do, so let us see. So, following annotated problem is what we have reduced our problem to. What is our given problem? Our given problem is we are given given a bipartite graph G. Okay. We are given two sets B and W, they may intersect. Okay. I am not saying that they do not intersect. Okay. Okay. An integer k, that is what we are given. We have to find a set O of size at most k such that, right, such that G minus S, sorry, such that G minus O has two coloring, okay, G minus S has a two coloring where, what is the property? Where B minus O is is colored black and W minus O is colored white, right? So what I'm saying? Okay, fine. So if you the moment you fix black and white of these vertices, which is fixed, then you know that look at their neighbors of the black vertices. They should either be deleted or they should be colored white. So fine. So that is what I have put my constraint constraint on this. Similarly, look at the neighbors of W in G minus S. Since these guys are forced to be colored white, their neighbors must be colored black, 
right because this you so now that is what is so so you are given a bipartite graph g you are given two sets of colors black and white and they may intersect in your integer k your goal is find delete me some set of k vertices that o so that now if i look at the look at the two coloring of this g minus o then the vertices of b minus o, o is really colored black w minus o is colored white because once this is done then the then then you can extend the coloring given by b and w to a coloring of everything so we have reduced our problem on a general graph by guessing this p and w to a annotated problem on bipartite graph and for this we are going to design a polynomial time algorithm in a minute okay now notice how many partitions are there number of partitions of s into b and w is 2 to the power k plus 1 right so once i have guessed this i'm going to solve this problem in polynomial time then the total time to solve total time to solve disjoint compression oct is 2 power k n to the power big o of 1 right which will imply a 3 power k n to the power big o of 1 time algorithm for oct right which implies that all we need is to be able to give a polynomial time algorithm for this annotated problem now let's look at how we are going to solve this annotated problem okay 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 so let's focus on this annotated problem so let's just record this information in the annotated color problem so now what we have is a set here uh, this is my white and this is my black okay this is my uh, black set and say white set first of all the vert look the vertices that are in b intersection w must be deleted right why because look if you don't delete them then you have to keep them as a black right as well as white that's not going to happen so you must delete them so that implies that b and w are disjoint okay so we will assume now from now onwards that b intersection w is empty okay okay so let's look at the picture again okay so here is your bipartite graph so now we'll come to that b and w okay and we have this set b and w so now we are going to treat them as a set b and w now so this is my graph g g is bipartite what is the meaning of g is bipartite there exist a two coloring of g okay I'm going to call that color B0 and W0. So suppose this is my partition, B0 and W0. Okay. Now let's look at where the sets B are. Uh, okay. So suppose this is my set B, and this is my set, this is my set B, and this is my set W. Now what you know? Note this that look my current coloring so i am going to find my two coloring with the help of existing coloring with the help of b0 w0 coloring 
Now, what does B0, W0 coloring does? It does, what it does is that for these vertices, okay, these vertices, right, these vertices would like to be black, but with the current coloring, they are in some sense colored white or W0. So, we know that these vertices would like to, uh, would like to change their colors. Okay. Uh, similarly, look at a W vertices. Okay. Look at these vertices. They also would like what? Look at these vertices. These has been colored. These white vertices have been colored potential B0 or black vertices, but they would like to be white. So, they would like to find a true coloring where these colors of these vertices should change. Fine. Okay. So, okay. Uh, now, look at the black vertices which has been potentially colored black they, they are very happy say look keep us the way we are okay keep us the way we are like green we are green good to go and similarly those vertices of w which has been good to go they would like to be good to go and i'm going to call them as r vertices like c represents for change r represents for remaining so now what are the change vertices? Change vertices are B0, black guys, intersection W, union uh, W0, intersection B, and the remaining guys are uh, B0, intersection B, union W0, intersection W. So, those guys are of this nature. And the interesting thing which we are going to prove that to achieve such a coloring what are we going to show we are going to show the following lemma which is the crux of the proof okay and which is not very hard to show is that g minus o has required So, G, O is my solution. So, G minus O has a required two coloring if and only if, okay. G minus O has required two coloring if and only if O oh, no components of G minus O uh, Uh, if and only if, if and only if, I would say O separates, uh, O separates C from R or in other words, no component of no component of G minus O contains contains vertices from both contains vertices from both C and R. That is it. This is what the meaning of this. So, let us let us try to prove this lemma. Okay? And then we will be done. Okay? So, I am saying look at any set O which does your job then that is the property that G minus O has required two coloring. Okay? if and only if O separates C from R. Okay? So, let us prove this because then it is all about finding separation from C to R, right? which we can do. Which we. So, now look at G minus O has a required two coloring. Okay? So, now G minus O has a required two coloring. Now, then I have to show that O separates C from R. So, look at a connected component. Look at connected component of G minus O. 
let us take this picture, it will be very uh, helpful. Okay. Look at a component of G minus ohm. Okay. Now, what is the property? Now, let us ask ourselves, can that contain, it is a connected component, right? It is a, look at the connected component of G minus ohm. Okay. Now, let us ask ourselves, can that has vertex between a vertex, say, x in C and y in R. Okay. So, let us just try to understand what happens. So, suppose x is here and y is here. Okay. Now, what do you know? x wanted to, x is there. Now, let us see what happens. Now, look at a vertex y in this part of the R. Now, since B0, W0 is a bipartition, any path, any path from x to y is of odd length and by odd I mean number of edges right because why because look x has to the go to the other side either this is y or he has to come back again because there are no edges inside graph induced on b0 has no edges graph induced on w0 is no edges every edge is going across right. So, now what is the point then look we know that it is a valid two coloring. So, I started from x here. So, he needed to change his color. So, now this color, this guy has become black. So, in that component, this is white. Then, this is white and this is white, black, white. No, this is wrong. Sorry, my mistake. This is black and this is white. But, what did y wanted? Y wanted to be a black. So, this kind of path cannot exist. Okay. What about? So, let us look at. Let us look at here. Look at the other case. What about x here and y here? Okay. Other cases are just symmetric. Okay. Now, notice again because B0, W0 is a bipartition of G. Look at the path. Any path from x to y is of even length. Right? Even length. Again, number of edges. So, now look at x go here right right because then either this is a y or i go again to the other side and come again and suppose i get y now notice what color is x x wanted to change its color so x is has become black what is this color white what is this color black what is this color white what is this color black so every vertices which can be reached by odd path gets a white color and this black. But what is the property of this particular y? This guy is in remain that is it wanted to be white, but now you have made him black. right? So, these kind of paths are not possible if we have two valid two coloring. So, what is the meaning of that? It, which means that our solution O, o what do you call intersects or intersects all paths from change to remain. Okay. Okay. So, this is one direction of our proof. Okay. What is the other direction tells us? Other direction tells us, suppose O separates C from R. Then I am saying that look, if you find a smallest set of vertices which separates C and R, then that is good enough for you because then I can find this two coloring. So, this proof tells us that look, every set which does this job is a separator from C to R and every like no, 
your solution is a separator from C2R and in fact every separator gives you a solution. So in this case just find a minimum size separator and it should be done. Okay. Now let's look at now what I know that in we have a set O sorry G minus O has no component that has path from change to the mean. Okay. Paste. Okay. Now, how is the connected component here? Let's look at the connected component here. Now, any connected component here is going to contain uh, is going to contain, let's see, some vertex from here and some vertex from here, right? Right? Or rather, let's say, okay? Or rather, it is going to contain some vertex from the remaining, maybe some vertex from here and some vertex from the leg. But look, look at this component, okay? If this component, see, uh, if this component, say, if the component only contains R vertices, remain vertices, leave the coloring, don't change the coloring, right? But what could happen, paste, is that my component only contains change, okay? So it contains some vertices from here and some vertices from here. Okay, but now, if this is how this is how the bipartition looks like. I mean, look at the induced bipartition. Okay, it only contains change vertices. So what you will do, you but they are different connected components. If connected component contains only change vertices, what will you do? Okay, uh, rename B0 to W and W like suppose this component is V, then what will I do? So, we are going to rename B0 intersection Z to uh, W and B0 and and W0 intersection Z uh, to black. That's it. And then you have got a coloring for everything. So look at a connected component. If it is remain, don't change the color. If it is of change, if it, it only contains vertices from the change time, then just change the colors, right? Now it's consistent. And what is the property you have achieved that after you have deleted these vertices, you have a valid two coloring of my bipartite graph such that whatever vertices you wanted to be black, they are black. Whatever vertices of W that remains are, w, are white and whatever vertices of black remains are black. And that is what we wanted. So now, because of this lemma, what we have been able to show to you is that if you are looking for a, like if you are looking to find a required two coloring in this bipartite graph, it is enough for us to find separate C from R. And how can we achieve that? To achieve that, we are just going to apply, okay. So now that we have proved this lemma, all we need to show, say is that now we can use max flow min cut right? uh, and technique and check if there is a separator, there is a separator of size at most k, our O in time k times order k times m plus n where number of edges, number of vertices, right? So, in order k m plus n time, we can check whether uh, whether 
our annotated graph, bipartite graph problem is feasible or not, or is it a yes instance, which immediately implies that we can solve odd cycle transversal in 3 to the power k times 3 to the power k into the power big O of 1. So, yeah, so that was the last uh, lecture on odd, odd cycle transfer uh, on the I2D compression. And this method has been used uh, to set parameterized complexity of several uh, other problems like directed feedback vertex set. Okay. Uh, undirected multi cut and uh, several other problems. Uh, okay. uh, but uh, we will be talking about directed feedback vertex set in one of the lectures later because not only it requires the technique which we have seen of iterative compression, it also requires techniques what is called important separators and uh, we will, that will be only be introduced in uh, later weeks and when we will do that, uh, we will be giving an algorithm for directed feedback vertex set and it was a very big open problem with the directed feedback vertex set does admit an AT algorithm or not and it was only se settled in 2007 or 2008. Okay. So, uh, before I go, I, I like to make a remark is that if you notice uh, that OCT algorithm actually runs in time 3 to the power k some k to the power big O of 1 and uh, actually n plus m times n for the iterative compression. And it was a very big open problem whether we could get an algorithm with running time f of k uh, times linear dependence. So, uh, in the first paper of this nature, so look, so the reason why I am trying to tell you this is that there is also a lot of importance in on reducing the dependence on input size. So, classically these are the kind of algorithms which were told linear time or quadratic time or of this nature. So, getting a linear time algorithm for every fixed k was an important open problem for OCT and first authors got f of k uh, times m say log star m yeah. So, m plus n ok yeah. So, m plus n log star n. So, it is like small inverse of like Ackermann function. Okay. But this f of k was very bad. Later, a two group of people got an algorithm with running time this in 2014 and the current best algorithm runs in time 3 to the power k, k to the power big of 1 m plus n time. Okay. So, this is a history on this problem and there has also been a lot of work to uh, improve the base of the exponent and the best known base of the exponent algorithm is runs in time I think 2.3 something to the power k I do not remember very well and uh, but uh, this is not linear time this is like this is I would say some n to the power big of 1 time. I think 2.3 or some 3 some numbers here I do not remember and but this is based on this algorithm is based on uh, LP branching uh, the kind which you saw in the last lecture for vertex above guarantee and so it is basically it is making it is essentially making uh, that algorithm uh, what do you call for vertex cover a little bit more specialized and utilize the structure that comes from vertex cover and uh, then because of the known reductions from odd cycle transversal to vertex cover above guarantee problem, we immediately get an algorithm for odd cycle transversal running in time some 2.3 something, okay, which I do not remember. Maybe let me check. Uh, yeah, so it is 2.315. So, for completion, this. So, I think that just ends the uh, lectures on iterative compression. And uh, in the next week, you will be seeing uh, color coding or the randomized methods in uh, parameterized algorithm followed by tree width or tree decomposition based algorithm. So, thank you. Mm -hmm.